is something I want to show you here. You can see the blood vessel right there. But watch this. See the movement in there? I think that all 30 of these eggs are developing. I think we're gonna have a very good hatch. Uh, it does not hurt to get these eggs out. It does not hurt to get these eggs out of the incubator because a hen, when she is having, um, when she's incubating the eggs in the nest, you know, she will come off the nest every day usually, you know, to get water and uh, to eat or whatnot, what have you. So, They've been in there for 10 days. I've gotten them out, what, 10, 15 minutes. We'll get them back in there and we will candle them again. I have to see how long from now we will do that, but we will candle them again to see if they're further developing. Because if, if you have some still at the same stage you have them now, more likely they're not gonna hatch. So you do gotta kinda keep an eye on that. Uh, I have hatched out eggs without doing this, but now that you look back on stuff, you know, you wish you would've, would've known what was going on, so. It's just a way to know that your eggs are doing fine. But we, I'm, I'm hoping we have a 100% hatch rate on this one. I know that's very unlikely, um, but I think we can do it because you know the eggs weren't uh, weren't shipped or anything. So, and I know that they're fertile now. So, I hope they all make it. Okay, now we're in the lockdown stage for the eggs. You're going to take them out of their tray and you're going to turn your turner off. And you're gonna wind up putting them in this bottom tray here and sliding it in the bottom and leaving it there for three days. You do not want to open the door once you do this. So, I'm gonna show you some tricks. You get some of this paper, this paper, roll of paper here that you can find in the painting section of any hardware store. Measure it out. Perfect. Get it in here. Look at all the What this is going to do is going to keep your chickens from getting uh, sprawled legs. And it's something that you don't want them to have. Because they just won't make it if you... Okay, this is kind of a hurting my eyes. This will give them something to get traction to on the bottom. Now GQF sells some stuff for this, but this is cheaper and easier. And I was also gonna tell you, if you do order this incubator and all the other stuff that goes with it, be sure and order it all at the same time because if you order it and say, well, I'll buy this now and buy this later, just wait and, and buy it all at the same time because shipping alone will just, I mean, it'll get you. So I'm gonna show you how the inside of this looks. 
and we're going to candle the eggs one more time and I'll show you that and then we'll get them in here we'll slide them in the incubator and in three days we'll have baby chicken should look something like this don't have to be perfect let me kind of split the difference there This is how your egg will look here. You can see. And the rest of it's just full. But you can see some veins there. Okay, we're gonna try to get all the eggs in here as quick as possible but safely as possible. Next step is putting this wick in here. Keep a, keep a close eye on your humidity. You don't want it to get too high. And, and down here in the south, it's real easy to get it too high. You want to get it around uh, 65 will be perfect. That's what works best for me. But you you might have to, the little piece of foil you got covering up close to the, you want to bring it close to the wick as you can. But with every situation and every, you know, depending on where your location, it may be different. But here, that seems to work pretty good, so I'm gonna stay up a little late tonight to keep an eye on it and make sure my humidity is uh, is correct. I'm gonna have to tinker with that a little bit because you don't want to open this incubator back up until they're all hatched, in which day 23, 21. <laughs> hatched so many different things, but nothing on 23, so I don't know why I thought that. But on day 21, they should all be hatched. But I do sometimes leave them in there a full 24 hours because they have their yolk sac, so they'll be okay. And they can go 24 hours without food. That's what's so great about the birds being able to be shipped because, you know, you may lose some, but you can ship them because, you know, they're, they're pretty good for at least 24 hours. So we'll just keep an eye on the, on the middle. You can see there are a little hole inside the egg there. That's called pipping. That's when the chicken pips a little hole out of the egg and begins to hatch. call the hatch uh, we've had the chickens in this is the 22nd day it's not a full 24 hours uh, after the 21st day but we're going to go ahead and call it we're going to get the chicks out we're going to get them over here to the uh, brute box the brute box you want to have set up and have the light on the brute box for a full 24 hours before you put the chicks in there to get the get it warmed up in there now, I use pine shavings and everything, but we'll talk more about that later. But right now, we really need to get the birds in the brew box.
some the water is. And count them as we do it. Okay, the chicks are a few days old now and we've got them in the brew box and they're doing fine. Out of 30 eggs, we had 27 hatch, which gives us a 97% hatch rate, which is highly exceptional. Usually you're looking for an 80% hatch rate. But I wrote all this stuff down the way I set up my incubator and I will continue to use this when hatching out chickens. Now I just have to figure out how to do it with the quail, which in a few months we'll be doing a video on hatching out quail. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. And this is Farmer Floyd saying goodbye, good night, and God bless, and don't forget to subscribe.